Hey everyone, I'm Mod6 and I'm one of the only Call of Duty content creators that you know of that's actually been to war. I stream and make YouTube content around Call of Duty Mobile and I served for just under 10 years in the US Army as an airborne infantry officer, having done three deployments to Afghanistan. Now in this video, I'm making a loadout that's the most realistic to what I actually looked like and carried the weapon systems, the equipment, the uniform, everything to what what I looked like on my last deployment as an airborne company commander in the army. Now what it means to be in the airborne infantry is that it's an infantry unit, those are soldiers on the ground who have the operational capacity to jump out of airplanes, to do tactical airborne assaults where a large number of people exit the aircraft in rapid succession to get as much of a force on the ground as possible in order to take a certain area from the air. And so that's what I did as a company commander in the army. And then I also did three deployments through various units and at different times to Afghanistan, spending about two years or so in combat. And so that involved contact with the enemy, many, many firefights over the two years I spent in Afghanistan. I worked and talked with different aircraft, controlling aircraft and firefights and doing airspace deconfliction. And so that's my military experience. And what I'm doing today in this video is trying to create the most accurate loadout to represent what I look like on those deployments in Afghanistan. And then we're gonna see if it works in the game. So let's check it out. So let's get into the loadout and I'll show you every attachment, why I put it on there and why I chose this skin. And then we played some multiplayer games and some battle royale games on stream and I'll show you how those turned out, exactly how effective this loadout is in Call of Duty Mobile. I'll tell you, it's awfully effective in real life. Uh, it's it's as close as I can come. It's as close as I can come. So uh, it, and it's remarkably accurate. You know the the radios, the helmet cam, the the knee pads and the pants. Everything is as accurate as you could possibly get. Right. I even chose airborne as my battle royale class because I was airborne in the United States Army. So this is what we look like here. The, there's a couple of key differences. Number one, I generally didn't wear a face cover over the lower half of my face, so that part was exposed, but I did always wear eye protection, either clear if at night or uh, shaded if during the day, glasses, eye protection. Now the knee pads, like I said, are accurate. I have multicam pants with the knee pad inserts. Rarely, rarely did I carry my pistol in a drop leg holster like this. For the most part, these drop leg holsters, in my experience, they just make it harder to run. They slow you down, they slow your movement down. This little screen on the wrist obviously did not exist, but what I did have on my off hand, this left hand here, is I had a execution summary taped to my hand, like an NFL quarterback. An execution summary is all of the radio codes for key points and checkpoints in the mission so that if you call off a single code word, everyone on that radio net knows what you're talking about, knows what checkpoint you're talking about. And it wasn't to be secretive. It was just to apply one word for a whole situation so it was easier to describe over the radio. Now, these magazine pouches on the front of the plate carrier are pretty accurate. I'll tell you, I did not have grenades dangling off everywhere. My grenades were in pouches. You don't just clip the grenade on to your kit with, with the spoon, that little tab that's sticking off the side of the grenade. When you pull the pin, what actually starts the fuse of the grenade is releasing that spoon, that little ting, that sound that comes off the grenade when you release the spoon. That's what starts the fuse not pulling the pin. And so you never hang a grenade by that, what's called the spoon on your kit, because in the event that you dislodge the spoon, somehow while the grenade is literally attached to your chest, that's a bad situation. So a few points of accuracy here, but anyway, we'll stop talking about the army things and get into this loadout specifically. Now, the reason why I've picked each one of these attachments will start at the top, the MIP light barrel. So it's not the shortest barrel. This is like an eight and a half to 10 and a half inch type of barrel for the M4. That's not what I carried. 
Standard issue M4 rifles in the Army have a 14 and a half inch barrel. So they're a little bit shorter. They're not super, super short. And so that's why I think this MIP light barrel is the most accurate barrel to the one that was on my rifle in the Army. Now, next up, this three power, 3X tactical scope. This is as close as I can get to a Trijicon ACOG. Most of our engagements in Afghanistan were at greater than 100 meters. And so that three power, that 3X magnification was a huge advantage with those longer engagement distances. But I think this 3X tactical scope is the most accurate optic to the one that was on my rifle on my last deployment. Now I carried a stock. I had a stock on my rifle called a SOP mod. Uh, this Magpul SOP mod stock was the was the stock that I chose, and I think the MIP Strike stock is the closest representation of that buttstock that was on my rifle in Afghanistan. So I I changed out the standard issue stock for that Magpul SOP mod stock because of the large contact area for your cheek, and so that's that's the most accurate stock I can think of to the one that was on my rifle. In Afghanistan, and lastly, I had a grip on my uh, on the pistol grip of my of my rifle. The granulated grip tape is the closest thing I can think of to exactly what that rear grip looked like on my rifle. And then for the last portion here, I had a PEC 15 on my rifle. That is a laser. Now it's slightly different than the lasers in the game because all of the lasers in the game have a visible laser sight in daylight. Now the laser that was on my rifle was not visible in daylight. It was only visible under night vision goggles, which was the main point of the laser, right? It's difficult to aim down a sight with night vision goggles on. You're looking through multiple different sets of optics. It doesn't really work. And so this laser gave us the option of using the visible laser sight, the IR laser that you can see with night vision goggles, but the enemy could not see because they didn't have night vision goggles. So huge advantage for tactical operations at night. So that's it. That's the loadout. We've got the MIP light barrel short, the 3X tactical scope one, MIP strike stock, the OWC laser tactical, and the granulated grip tape. So that's the loadout. We're going to get into these games. We played some multiplayer games, played a couple of BR rounds on stream. I'll show you what that looked like, and we'll see how this loadout actually does in Call of Duty Mobile. I'll tell you, it does pretty well in the real world. Let's get into these games and see how it goes. I did not think I was in range. Plenty of opportunity to screw it up. Feel a little bit better. Get turned on, son. I see you. I see you. Lost him. Warning. EMP drone is about to strike. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. It's a rough way to go. <laughs> Let's see about dropping an airborne here. Assemble. Let's fly together. Somebody there. Woo. We might get a kill on the This is 
lively. Safe zone is collapsing. Ooh, it reloads fast, this one. Yikes. Hey, got a kill with it. Feel good. Tank has been delivered. Be careful. The enemy just used a flash shield. I will not have my kills yoinked. I will not have my kills yoinked. <laughs> Alright, I see him. No! The camper wins! The camper wins! Oh, man. Hey. That's okay. That's okay. You run in on campers. That's what you do. You run in on campers. ACOGs <laughs> are they're slick, man. I love them on an, on an M4, but in Call of Duty, they are terrible. Oh, there's a kill. <laughs> Cover me. <laughs> hey. Cover me. I'm down. Need back up. Reloading. Right. Bravo. Oh, Good lord, I cannot jump and shoot with this sight. Hit fire, everybody. Reloading. Reloading. Cover me. I'm getting some I'm getting some things done over here. And when it comes to what like which game mode is the best representation of real world tactics, Battle Royale is it for sure. Just because you have to do I mean standard movement maneuver across terrain, you know? And the it's a little bit closer to the that real world no respawn life. I have to play at range with this optic, but I'm not an at range type of player. I want to run in. <laughs> Losing Charlie. Contact with enemy. Lost that round, but it's oh. not. <laughs> Lost. Nobody's playing objective. I guess I should play objective, right? That's if we're going for real world stuff. My Capture entire job. I was a company commander. I did none of the like. Capture. Point man, first person to start shooting. Kind of stuff. I was more objective focus. Reloading, cover me. Enemy has C. Heads up. Objective play. It, it, I think about Capture realistically out, like if I'm out, you know, in a combat environment on a patrol, and Enemy we find alpha. a gun, Enemy has alpha. like or like there's you know you pull a gun off of uh, off of uh, EKIA or something like that. Like the idea that we would. Then use that gun is laughable. Reloading, cover me. Like that would never happen. You would never pick the gun. Because also the the most inaccurate thing with most of this, I just yoinked both of Poppy Web's kills there. Uh, the most inaccurate thing with all of this is the concept of of optics just popping right onto a, to a weapon and being perfectly perfectly uh, zeroed in or sighted in, as a hunter might say, to. Uh, to the weapon system at the right range. Objective almost complete. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, this dude keeps trying to shoot me in the back with a shotgun. <laughs> Just running away from him. Losing C. Lost C. Reloading. The three X optic is a little bit better on this map. Oh, another kill. Changing mag. <laughs> you you kill him halfway and I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> Recon standing by. Recon is standing by. 
All right, that does it for the realistic army loadout obviously carrying the M4 rifle. I definitely like this loadout for Battle Royale as opposed to multiplayer. Multiplayer is a little bit fast paced for that three power optic and Battle Royale does a better job of replicating what could sort of be a real world environment. The need to create a route plan, traverse different types of terrain, to involve movement and maneuver as part of the firefight or the gunfight. In Battle Royale, it's feasible to make a short tactical retreat, create flanking opportunities, and maneuver on the enemy as well as engage at much longer ranges, which in my experience in combat was more often the case. Now that's just my experience and may not hold true for everyone who's been deployed in different environments, but we're trying to create a realistic replication in this game of what I experienced when I was in the US Army. So that's what we did and frankly it's not that bad of a loadout for Battle Royale. If you enjoyed this video, only if you enjoyed it, hit the like button. It helps more people see my content here on YouTube. I'm streaming on Twitch four days per week on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So check that out if you wanna jump into the community and hang out with us live. You'll see a couple of videos that will help make you better at Call of Duty Mobile. Check out the Let's Play series or one of these tutorial videos. Thanks for watching, Mod6 out.